the cross firing continued all day until late in the evening when there was a crashing downstairs and a loud voice said surrender in the king's name so we went downstairs we had a wounded boy and the, the bullets you see were flying and the plaster from the ceiling, a very ornate plaster ceiling, was crashing down on the floor. And I put this boy into a porter's chair with a hood, hooded chair and pushed him up against the pillar and he asked me to hold his hand, which I did. Then Dr. Lynn answered the challenger and said, we surrender, after some minutes. So we were taken out the back window there into the castle yard and brought into Ship Street barracks. All of us, men and women, that were taken. And there we were for a couple of days, very uncomfortable, no beds, nothing to lie on. You see, no blankets. But there we stayed until we were moved then to Kilmaine. I was with the girls brought up into one of the upper galleries where some of the men were, including James Connolly. Well, every morning we heard shots in the yard below and there was something sinister about them. We knew the men were being shot, which was the truth, they were. So that was a terrible experience for us, and that went on. And after, I think, I think a week or so, maybe more, we were then moved to Mount Joy prison. I'll sing you a song of a row in a town. When the green flag went up and the red rag came down T'was the neatest and sweetest game ever you saw And we played the best game played in air in Gobra Our great English captain was a raven that day Says he, give me one hour and I'll blow them to heads. But a big mother bullet got stuck in his crop and he died of lead poison in Erin Gobra. God rest Gallant Pierce and his comrades who died. Tom Flack, MacDonough, MacDermot, MacBride. And here's to Sean Houston, who gave one hurrah. Then he plays the machine gun there in Gobra. Here's a help to the men of the brave rank and file. And the lion-hearted women of Erin's Green Isle. Let true men salute them with wonder and awe. For they play the best game played in Erin Gobra. Fifty-five years ago, I was brought home from happy normal France, where I was educated, to Ireland of the evictions. I watched evictions. I saw whole countrysides and little townlands devastated with battering ram and fire. Good, honest, hard-working people turned out of their little homes that they had built to wander the roads, the emigrant ship their only hope. I saw babies born in ditches and die in the infamous overcrowded workhouses. I swore as a girl I would devote whatever strength God had given me to the freeing of my country. At the start, I collected stones for boys to throw at the bailiffs and emergency men. It didn't do much good, for it was guns and not stones that were needed. And the boys went to prison. 
and I lit bonfires to welcome them when they came out. And I tried, while they were in jail, to help their families so they would find a home to come back to. I hate seeing good people suffer at the hands of worse, just because those worse people have law and order at their back. And law and order in Ireland is synonymous with British dominion here. What I believed as a young girl, I believed as an old woman. Force is the only remedy for a people who have let the stranger get hold of their land. Talk is good in its place, but if it has not force behind it, it cuts no ice. It may be amusing, especially for the talkers. The Irish are the best soldiers in the world and the worst diplomats, while the English are just the contrary. We are as God made us and must use the talents he has endowed us with. And if we try to use the weapon of the other man, history should have taught us that we are always beaten. But the lessons of history are not taught to our children in the schools. 